cut the moment you cut this you begin to see which okay you have what loads perpendicular to the beam axis right right at the start of course we had a load that was inclined to the beam axis in which case you will get three internal forces right otherwise you will get these two internal forces so one is a shear force one is a bending moment the internal forces that you get which you have to find you have to mark it in their positive directions right so that is important now once you cut it you have a right hand side and a left hand side of this beam right so we look at the side which is easier meaning it has less loads and that's all it means less loads right so here it has only one load on this side you have a reaction here and a reacting moment there also so so we look at this side okay now this is this is a this is the right hand side of this beam and the place where we do not know these internal forces is the left hand end of it the left hand end right so the positive shear will be left up so the left hand end will mean left up right so you do left up so that will give you the positive shear force direction and then you put a bending moment in a way that will cause a positive bending moment defined as you know causing the beam to hog like this right so that is a positive direction of moment you write equilibrium equations for this part of the beam find m and s and then we can find our bending moment uh, and shear force expressions we can also explore whether there are functions of x and then take values at different values of x and we can find the whole shear force diagram and bending moment diagram right that that's what we did right i also said that you know once you get used to it instead of cutting it you can just take a walk to it right and then you look either to the left hand side or to the right hand side one of those two sides so once again we are now looking at this right hand side and we are looking at what are the things that contribute to positive shear so the rule is left up right down so if you are looking at the right hand side if it is right down it will be positive shear so where the shear force is concerned that will be equal to this w will contribute to positive shear so s will be equal to plus w right so once again if you think about the moment you go here look at this side and you think okay what is the moment created by all these forces on the right hand side due to this load this beam is going to bend like that right so it is going to hog like that right so once again the bending moment is positive it is plus w into that distance which is l minus x right so sometimes you have sometimes you know the the expression now here both expressions they are positive with respect to these directions sometimes it will be negative with this rec with respect to these directions for example in this one so you have this moment will be minus of ra x because this is ra now here we are going here we are looking to the left hand side and then from here if you look here we we see that it is doing that it's doing that right so it's causing the beam to sag so the expression will be minus ra x right now after writing minus ra x if the actual value of ra is also minus in other words if ra is not acting upwards but it is acting downwards then the actual value of the moment will become positive right but this direction we have to uh, we, we we have to we have to write this direction correctly okay so one example of what i just said a little while ago we found here yeah here i think here yeah? right in in this example because in this region mx is in fact equal to minus rax same thing because you go here this is a point moment so you go here look to the left hand side and you see ra that you have marked in your in your in your, in your diagram right and it is causing this beam to bend like this right uh so the moment here will be minus ra times that distance x right uh but previously we have taken equilibrium for the entire beam and we have found what the value of ra is 
So, it so happens that the actual value of R a is in fact a negative value, right. So, R a is equal to minus F d divided by L. So, once we put minus F d divided by L here, this moment will in fact become positive, right. But th that is uh, as part of the process, like you know, ok. So, so that is uh, th that you have to understand. The other thing is in situations like this where you have some kind of feature in the middle of the beam, whether it is a point moment or a point load like that, we, we consider two regions and today I will look at an example that considers more than two regions also, right. We consider this region and then we tend to look to this side because there are fewer loads. Then when x is greater than a, we go here and we look onto that side because once again there is only one force there, right. So, hopefully all these are clear. Let me walk down the class and ask whether there is any, any other is, uh, is this expressions that we derived and I explained from the cases that we have done so far also how these expressions can in fact be shown to be correct, right. So, these are the two expressions d s by d x is equal to minus w, d m by d x is equal to minus s and d 2 m by d x squared is equal to w. So, mostly it is equations 1 and 2, right, that we use most of the time, right. So, let me see what I have given you as a handout. I cannot remember because I have chopped and changed a bit. Uh, okay, I have started with example 7, but I am going to uh, come to that later. So, in your notes, if you turn to where's this? Okay, I, I think due to some oversight, I have not actually printed that. Oh, okay, that is not a very good thing, <laughs> right? Okay. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. You oh. are a professor, you are allowed to be a bit absent minded, right? Okay, right, okay. Right, so, this is on page 5 of last week. Thank you very much. Okay. So, let us have a look at this, right? So, this is this is now how. The, the kind of situations in which you can use this d m by d x equals minus s and d s by d x equals minus w, right. Okay, so, we have to find the total load carried by the beam, the end reactions, the bending moment at mid span and the position and magnitude of the mag, uh, uh, maximum bending moment, right. So, we have here 20 newtons per millimeter, right. That is for each millimeter there will be 20 newtons acting. But that value itself is changing because for 1 millimeter here you have 60 newtons acting. So, w is a function of x, right. So, we can write w as this, right. Actually, we should write simple w, it is preferable to write. So, so, here maybe you should make this simple w. Here, of course, these are simple w's, right, ok. Normally, capital W we give for a point load and simple w we give for uniformly distributed loads. It is not so important, but that is a normal convention, right. So, because this is a linear function of x, we can write a plus b x and get what that function is, right. At x equals 0, w equals 20. So, we can immediately say that a equals 20 because here 0 equals a plus 0. So, w a will be equal to 20 and at x equals 400, w will be equal to 60. So, if you substitute that, now we know a. So, we can put 60 equals 20 plus 400 b, right, and we should be able to find the value of b, it, it, it works out to 1 over 10, right. So, this is simple uh, straight line equation, you are given two points and you can find uh, the constants a and b, right. Now, the total load of course, you can find it in this very simple way, but you know, so, so you can take the average load that is 20 plus 40, the 20 plus 60, 80 divided by 2 is 40. So, it has an average load of 40 Newton per millimeter and 40 if you multiply by 400, you will get 16,000 Newtons, right, 16,000 Newtons, which is the number that I have got here. 
but I have got it in a different way because now I am trying to now focus your mind on into this calculus oriented approaches right. So, actually it will be uh, the integral of w dx that is the area under the curve that will be the total load right. So, in fact, this is what, what has been done right. You can do this as uh, so, in fact, I have used the simple way to do it right. So, you can go home and integrate this with the limit from 0 to 400 right. Integrate this function right uh, with the limit from 0 to uh, 400 and see whether you get the same answer right ok. Right now, we can find those reactions. So, the reactions we find and I have done this kind of thing before we take moments about B. <coughs> So, then you have R A times 400. Now, <coughs> <coughs> when we are taking moments for the entire beam, we do not have a sign convention saying clockwise moments are positive and all of that, right. So, moments in one direction are positive, moments in the other direction are, are negative, right. You, you can have anything for that, right. Just moments in one direction must balance the moments in the other direction, right. That is, if you are taking moments for the entire beam. So, R A times 400 is equal to now the moment caused by this can be considered of being made of two parts. One is a rectangular part where the total load is 20 into 400 times the line of action of that load. Line of action is 200, right. That is a rectangular part, right. Then you have a triangular part and that moment is opposite to the moment caused by R A about B, right. Then you have a triangular part. So, this base of the triangular part is 60 minus 20 equals 40. So, half of that will give you the average. So, that is 40 divided by 220 uh, times this length 400 and the line of action is one third from here that is the centroid of that triangle is one third from the base, right. So, the that is 400 divided by 3, right. So, here we are. So, in one direction we have R A times 400, other one you have the moment due to the rectangular part and the moment due to the triangular part, right. So, we get this expression for R A <coughs> and R A plus R B is equal to 16,000 and uh, these two values you get for R A. Now, now when you do these problems, right, this is a good practice wherever you do it, I mean from A level or whatever it is. So, I am just telling you good habits because some of you do not have good habits, right. You must always look at the physical problem and check whether your answer makes sense because some mistakes can be caught like that, not all mistakes, some mistakes, right. I mean I frequently make arithmetic mistakes because normally I do things I am a bit untidy I must say I do things on the back of an envelope or on an old piece of paper. So, a plus sign might put as minus. So, if you have made a mistake like that you go and look at this you know you see R B is greater than R A right. So, if you look at this kind of loading <coughs> there is more load on this side of the beam than on this side of the beam you would expect <coughs> R B to be greater than R A. If your calculation gives you that R A is greater than R B, you look at this picture and you immediately know you have made some silly mistake. So, you can go and correct it, right. So, always look to the physical problem, right. So, the physical problem is converted to mathematics. At different points in your mathematical journey, you should look back at the physical problem and check whether things are ok, right. Right, ok. Now, we have to uh, uh, find what are the things we have to find, right? We have to find the bending moment at mid span, the end reactions we have found, right? So, the bending moment at mid span meaning that ok, we have to get an expression for m, we have to get an expression for m, right? And the position and magnitude of the magni ma uh, maximum bending moment. So, I told you last time I think I would have finished of course, the thing is I am lecturing to three groups I do not know exactly what I tell each group, but because dm by dx is equal to minus s to get the position of the maximum moment we can put dm by dx equal 0 and find the value of x, but in fact dm by dx is equal to minus s right. So, you put minus s equal 0 or s equal 0 and then you find the value of x for which s is 0 and that is the value of x at which you will get your maximum bending moment, 
right. So, it is it, good to start with the shear force, right. There are various places from which you can start and also you can do this problem without using any of this calculus based approach, you can do that also, right. But uh, you, you might uh, discover, you know, when you do more problems that this is a fairly useful approach, right, okay, right. <coughs> so, ds by dx equals minus w, uh, that we know from the rule, right. So, uh, now w is, we have found that already 20 plus 1 over 10 x, so we just put minus 20 minus x upon 10 and uh, we can get that expression. Now, we can integrate. So, if you integrate both sides, on the left hand side you get s, on the right hand side you do the integration, right, that is 20 x minus x square divided by 20, but of course, then there will be a constant of integration, right. So, when you integrate, you have new constants that come, when you differentiate the constants tend to vanish, right. Now, when you the so, so we have an equation for s, but we have an unknown constant, right. So, the way to find the unknown constants in these kinds of differential equations, the solution of differential equations is to what is to use what are called, I have not written it down, but uh, to use what are called boundary conditions, right, boundary conditions. right because at the boundaries of things we normally know what is happening right so for example uh, we know that uh, say in a beam like this we know that bending moment is zero here and zero here that's a boundary condition right uh, in between we don't know what the bending moment is but we know here for sure right uh, so, like that there are various boundary conditions and you can just check whether there are any boundary conditions that you know, okay. So, here with a little bit of imagination based on knowledge that you know, now we have found the reactions and I have also told you that the shear force at the ends of the beam are equal to the reactions. Of course, sometimes the, the numerical value, right. So, sometimes it might be equal to the, new, the, to the actual algebraic value, sometimes it might be equal to the negative of that, right. So, you will need to have that little bit of knowledge about uh, the subject, right. So, generally on the left hand side, the shear forces are positive, right. So, we can say at A, in other words at x equals 0, the shear force will be equal to plus R A, be equal to plus R A. So, that is what we have done here at x equals 0, shear force is equal to R A, which is equal to 2000, right, 2000 divided by 20,000 divided by 3. So, you put 20,000 divided by 3 equals here 0, because x equals 0, here also this will be 0 and C 1. So, C 1 will simply be 20,000 divided by 3. So, now you put that back in this equation here and S will be equal to minus 20 x minus x squared by 20 plus 20,000 divided by 3, right. So, can you see, now first of all we got w as a function of x somewhere earlier, then we are integrating once and getting shear force as a function of x, now we are integrating one more time and getting bending moment as a function of x, right. So, that is the typical way that we solve these differential equations, right. <coughs> so, now of course, we cannot just integrate s because we know that dm by dx is actually equal to minus s, right. So, that is, so all these minus terms become plus and vice versa, right. So, if you integrate this, you can, you can add some notes here if you want, right, saying integrating with respect to x or something like that. On the left hand side, you get x, here you get whatever you get when you integrate these terms x square divided by 2 times 20 that will give you this, x cube divi divided by 3 and the 20 remains downstairs, so it will be of this and this one 20,000 x divided by 3, right. Then of course, you get another constant of integration C 2, right. So, that is now the expression for m, but once again we have an unknown constant, right. But we use the uh, knowledge that I said before that does not come from any calculation but it comes from your knowledge of simply supported beams 
at x equals 0, you, instead of putting x equals 0, of course, you, put, you can put at x equals 400 also. But that will make just life difficult for yourself, right? Because then you have to put 400 in that equation. At, at x equals 400 m equals 0, at x equals 0 also m equals 0, right? So, you can use either of the two. So, if you put x equals 0 m equals 0, then this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 0 and then here 0 will be equal to C2 and C2 will be equal to 0, very simple, right. So, if you put x equal at x equals 400 <laughs> m equals 0, then you have to find this value and this value and this value and you will find that it is 0, you can try it for yourself, right, okay, right. So, so then whatever way you do it, C2 will become equal to 0, right. So, now we have our expression for m, right. So, now it is very simple, what is the value of bending moment and mid span which is one of the questions that you have been asked, the third question I think, right. Wherever you have x, you put 200, right. So, you will get 800,000 Newtons per millimeter, oh and sorry, Newton millimeter, Newton millimeter, right. And the maximum bending moment occurs like I have been saying earlier when shear force equals 0, right. So, 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 from equation 1, you put equation 1, you put this equals 0 and then you will have actually to solve a quadratic e equation which I have not done here. You will get two values for x, one will not have a meaning, either the value will be less than 0 or greater than 400 or something like that, right, that is what you will have. So, so you, you try it out for yourself, right, do not take my word for it, okay, because at the exam you might get confused, if you get two values you will not know what to do. So, you go and do it at home, right. So, no spoon feeding here, right, okay. So, the valid value of x, right, the physically valid value of x, because you see this function, we do all kinds of things, you know this bending moment function, we do this, if it is parabolic, you know it will do, it will do maybe various things, right. We do not know the way that function is, uh, is behaving. Uh, at x, at x less than 0 and x greater than 400, right, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so most likely you go and check it out. This is a parabolic function now. So, this shear force, you know, will go like this and maybe it might cut the x axis again somewhere here, right. It might cut the x axis again, we, we do not know, right. But this is the one where it cuts the x axis within this region. So, that is the value, value for x. So, then for this bending moment expression, we substitute x equals 216 and then you get that answer for bending moment. So, as you can see, the value for m comes out in terms of the normal sign conventions. These are sagging moments, right. So, uh, so you will get it as minus moments like that, right. And the shear force of force also, it will respect those equations, will respect the uh, what you call it uh, uh, sign convention. So, we normally know in these distributed systems, shear force on the left hand side, by definition of course, clockwise shear is positive right. Uh, this has a positive value, it becomes 0 somewhere, where it becomes 0, bending moment is maximum and then it becomes negative on this side. So, this negative value equals R B and this positive value equals R A, that is a feature of shear force diagrams which you should know by now, right, okay. So, so this is the solution to that problem, right. So, I think that is all there is to that. Ah, yes. Ah, so, these are just the equations that we have. Uh, obtained, right. I do not know whether I have put this even in your hand or maybe I have not, right, okay. <coughs> so, that is uh, I would think I was not responsible for this example, I am just teaching it, but I think this is a good example about how you know you can use these equations because uh, w is also a function of x, w is also a function of x and it is a nice function of x, right. I mean it is a linear function of x, right, okay. <coughs> right. No questions? Right. Okay. Right. Let me see what I have uh, given to you next. Right. So, in what I gave you today, I have started with 
exercise 7, right? So what I will do is I will come to that exercise 7 a bit later on. I will look at, uh, well, well I, ha I, I have something which is called number 4, right? That is uh, the bottom of page 1, bottom right hand slide of page 1, right? I will show you what that is in my, uh, in my slides here. Oops, somewhere here. No, no, it's all the way down here. So this is arranged in slightly different way. All of this has been required because, you know, I am shrinking seven lectures into six, right? Okay. Now, this is a bit of an odd problem. So sometimes you can call this an inverse problem, right? Actually, this is not a typical engineering problem, but all engineering, most engineering problems are inverse problems, right? Now, the thing is, most of these types of problems, now, this is a typical sort of engineering calculation, is something like a sort of, you know, something like a structure on which you have a load and then you ask to find what the bending moment is, right? Uh, so, so, um, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, an engineering problem would look something like this. You will not be asked to find the bending moment, right? You will ask, you will be asked to do something like this, right? Um, you know, there is a load, there is a load uh, uh, that has to be carried uh, over a span that is 10 meters long, right? Say a load of uh, 1000 kilo newtons, right? What is the size of beam required in order to carry that beam safely? So, it is like an inverse problem, right? So, actually to do that kind of problem, you need to find the stress also because different materials have different allowable stresses, right? But uh, what I am trying to say is, you know, as you progress in your career, you move from engineering analysis to what we are doing now to engineering design. Where engineering analysis is concerned, there are unique solutions, meaning there is one single right answer. Where engineering design is concerned, there is not a right single right answer, right? There are better answers and worse answers, not right and wrong, okay? Anyway, right, I will tell you a bit more about that next time maybe. But this is inverted in the sense that we normally give the loading and ask you to find the shear force and bending moment diagram. Here we have given the bending moment diagram and asked you to find what is the loading, right? So, it is inverted in that sense, right? The direction of solution is, is reversed, right? So, this is the bending moment diagram, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Deduce the shear force diagram and the loading system on the beam, right? So, here also we can use this calculus based approach for these kinds of problems, right? So, we can find the equation of the bending moment diagram in this case. First of all, we started by finding the equation of the load function in the earlier example. So, at x equals 0, m equals 0, at x equals L, m equals minus P L. Now, I have not gone through the entire formal process of writing A equals B x and then finding it, but you do that for yourself and you can find that m will be actually equal to minus P x, right? In this region, right? In that region. So, you can check my answer that I have got at x equals 0, m will be equal to 0, at x equals L, m will be equal to minus P L. That accurately describes this part of the bending moment diagram, okay. Now, we know that dm by dx is equal to minus, well actually, <coughs> uh, yeah, it is actually equal to minus uh, shear force, but from this equation, if you do dm by dx, you will get it as being equal to minus b, right? So, dm by dx is equal to actually the negative of the shear force. So, if you equate this side, you will say that the shear force is equal to p, right? That is what you get from this <coughs> first step, right? So, in this region, from this expression for bending moment, right, <coughs> taking the <coughs> first derivative with respect to x, we have been able to show that the shear force will be a constant. 
and we, we know that previously because in previous diagrams we are used to seeing that where the shear force is constant the bending moment is linear right we have seen a few diagrams like that okay <coughs> now how do we get the loading system right now that's a little more sort of uh, what shall i say less formal i think okay uh, yeah actually we have not uh, we have not uh, done it uh, in, in any systematic way, but you know if the shear force is equal to P right throughout, okay, we know that the shear force at this end will be equal in this case on the left hand side both the value and the mag a, 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 and the sign will be equal to this upward vertical reaction, right. So, the upward vertical reaction we will be able to find from this. So, from here you have gone here, the moment you see P here, you can see that on this left hand side, there will be a P force acting vertically upwards, right. So, that is all we can say at this stage, we cannot say anything about being 2 P or anything like that, we leave that there, right. Then we go on to the next slide and we find the expression for bending moment in this region now, when x is between L and 2 L, right. So, what do we know here? at x equals m l, m will be equal to minus p l, right, that is right. And at x equals 2 l, because x is being measured from here, x equals 2 l, m will be equal to 0, right, that is what we get here, right. So, once again, you have to do <coughs> that uh, bit where you uh, find the, from these two points of the straight line, you can find the equation of the straight line you will find that the equation of the straight line is in fact this, right, but you have to do that for yourself, right. All I am going to do is to verify it. So, at x equals L, m will be equal to P L minus 2 P L that is equal to minus P L, right, which is correct. And x equals 2 L, you have 2 P, 2 L into P minus 2 P into L and that is equal to 0. So, this expression accurately represents this part of the bending moment diagram, right. Also, as you can see with x being measured in this direction, here the gradient of bending moment is negative, which is why you get a minus constant, a negative constant for x. And in this region, the gradient of the moment is positive, which is why you get a positive uh, constant for x, right. So, all of those things are matching, right. So, once we do that, we do dm by dx and we find that it is in fact equal to P and we know that dm by dx is equal to the negative of shear force. So, the shear force equals minus P, right. So, in that region between L and 2 L, the shear force now suddenly changes from being plus P to minus P, right. So, it becomes minus P here, right. Now, we have to pull up some background knowledge and information that we have. We know that if the shear force suddenly drops at a particular point in a beam, it means there is a concentrated load acting at that point. The value of that concentrated load will be equal to the value of the step. So, from p going to minus p means there is a step of 2 p, right. So, we can then go and put 2 p here, we can go, go, and, go and put 2 p there, right. So, that is all we can do for the moment. So, we have p here, 2 p there, right. Now, we go down in the third region, we find an expression for bending moment that is very easy of course, m equals 0, right. So, dm by dx equals 0, which is equal to the negative of shear force and therefore, the shear force equals 0. So, we go back to the shear force diagram and we put this as 0, right, okay. So, what do we have here? Uh, now, here there is an, so here the shear force was minus p, suddenly in this region, the shear force is, uh, the, the shear force is uh, 0, right, the shear force is 0, okay, uh, okay, right. So, there must be some concentrated load that causes this step change and the load will be equal to this jump and so that will be equal to P, right. So, once you have that, then we know that this is symmetrical 
and we can do everything else in a symmetrical manner. Actually, now this is symmetrical, whereas this one is what is called skew symmetrical, right. So, you can work all of these things out, I have not done that, but I will tell you a little bit about symmetry and skew symmetry right at the end of the lecture, right, okay. So, the for okay, so no, I, I, will, I will mention it to you at that time, right? Let us not confuse today, uh, right now, okay. So, uh, now if you look at this loading arrangement, right, this is the one that produces a system which has in some region of the beam zero bending moment as well as zero shear force, right. So, now last time I told you about a, a loading system which happened to be due to two, two moments and if the applied moments on both sides are both equal, I said that the bending moment will be a value of m equal to these applied moments right through the beam, but the shear force will be 0 and I call that pure bending, right. So, I said there is another loading arrangement quite common loading arrangement where you can have another situation where the bending moment has some finite value, but the shear force is 0 and I asked you to think about it. I put it up in Moodle also. Did I put it up in Moodle? Can't remember. Maybe I did not I do not know, okay. Um, but you, you have to think about that, right. I might ask you that question at the exam, right, okay. So, sometimes these things that I uh, ask you and do not give you the answers. Uh, I have always done that, right, in my lectures, there are some parts which I do not lecture and I said you might get this at the exam. So, maybe there are about 5 or 6 things that I say like that, maybe 2 or 3 might come, right, because you have to learn to study by yourself, right, okay, we have to teach you to do that, right, lifelong learning, <laughs> that is what we are supposed to train you to do, right, not just regurgitate or, you know, vomit out uh, sort of what we have taught you in class, right, okay. So, say that might be one question that comes in the exam, what is the loading arrangement that uh, causes a some value of moment, but zero shear force, right, okay, pure bending, right, okay, uh, right, a any, any questions about that, any questions, okay, we can go on then, right, okay, right, somebody said something, no? So, this is the second example where we are using these, well, I mean differential equations you will learn from mathematics in a formal way and you have very, very complicated differential equations. These are the simplest form of differential equations that you can get, right. Okay. So, now we will go back to that exercise 7. We will go back to that exercise 7, which is there at the start of your page 1. So, that is this one here, yeah? right. Now, if you remember, you know, I think in my second lecture to you, where I introduced different types of beams. Now, I, I have been concentrating a lot on simply supported, on simply supported beams and cantilever beams, right. Those are the two main kinds of beams that we, ha we have come across, right. Now, here this has a support at the two ends and one support here also, right. Now, by now you would have gathered that, you know, when you want to find you know these bending moments and shear forces even for a simply supported beam normally we have to find the support reactions, right. So, here there are three support reactions and I have also said of course that most of the loads are vertical. So, the horizontal equilibrium equation will not help us, we will just get 0 equals 0. Now, there are three unknown reactions that you have to find. How many equations of equilibrium can you write for this entire beam? How many equations? How many equations of equilibrium? Normally for a beam, how many equations can you write? We have been doing that all the time. 
How many can you write? Yes? Four. How do you get four equations? Four equations. I mean, if you look at your notes, how many equations have you been writing? For, uh, to, I mean, now like this, we take a uh, moment about RA and things like that. How many equations have you written normally? Yeah, horizontally it will be a trivial equation, right? Horizontally it will be a trivial equation, okay? So normally there are three equations of equilibrium that you can write, right? But if one equation just gives you 0 equals 0, you have only two equations, right? So I will introduce you a, a term which I will talk about more in my next topic called statically determinate, right? Now, this subject is statics, right? So, we call it a statically determinate being. Statically determinate, right? So, normally for these two dimensional beams, right, which generally have, they are horizontal and have only vertical loads, you can have only two equations of equilibrium, right? You can have three, but they are not independent, meaning that, say, I have told you also that when you have a simple system like this, you can take moments about Ra and find Rb, you can take moments about Rb and find Ra, or instead of doing that, you can put Ra plus Rb equals W, right? But those are not independent equations. You, you can, uh, you know, figure that out for yourself. Right? There are only two equations. If you have three reactions, you cannot solve that problem. Well, at this stage, you cannot solve that problem. Right? We teach students to do it, uh, but, but those involve finding the stiffnesses of the beams. Right? Of course, most of structural engineering is about statically indeterminate structures. Statically indeterminate structures are also safer because it is always better to have three reactions in a beam rather than two reactions, right? Because you have extra supports, right? But they are more difficult to solve, right? So, we won't so try to solve them in first year, right? In first semester at any rate, right? But although we can write only two equations and find therefore potentially only two of these reactions, there is one feature in this beam that gives us another equation of equilibrium and that feature is this hinge, right? So, in the middle of this, we have a situation where there is a hinge here. In other words, this beam can freely rotate about that, right? So, that introduction of the hinge converts the statically indeterminate problem to a statically determinate one. Basically, you can think about it like this. In other words, you can use the hinge to write an extra equation of equilibrium for only part of the beam, for only part of the beam, right? At this hinge, right, we do not know what is happening. If you want, if you want, you can take a cut at this hinge. There will be, the, the, the point is that there will be no moment at that hinge because hinge means no moment, right? Of course, there will be a shear force in one direction, shear force in the other direction, right? If we cut it here, we would normally mark this side down and that side up according to our convention, right? That is, if we cut it. But before we cut it even, we can write the equations, we can write equilibrium equations and find R A, R B and R D and we are able to do that only because of this hinge, right? So, we do, we use the hinge first of all, right? Get it out of its way. So, the easiest thing to do, now, now the other thing of course is, Although all these problems that we give, including this one, this is not an inverse problem, right? Although they have the identical answers, you should get identical answers if you are correct, right? There are, you know, a slight variety of approaches, right? The simplest one that I said is, you know, I mean, let me mention that again. You know, if you want to find RA and RB for this system, either you can take two moment equilibriums or one moment equilibrium and one vertical equilibrium, right? So, you can use two, right? But you get the same answer, right? So, here also, 
you can try various combinations, but the easiest thing is to take moments about C, right. If you take moments about C only for this part of the beam, right, only for this part of the beam, maybe I should have mentioned that, right. Take at point C, take m equals 0 and you take moments about uh, moments for this part, that is C D, right. Maybe you should write D here also, I have written R D here, but the D is not written there, right, okay. So, now about this point, there is no moment at the point itself because it is a hinge. There are shear forces, but the, but the <coughs> uh, moment due to the shear force will be 0 because you are taking a moment at that point. So, the moment due to R D will be R D times 4, it will be balanced by this moment due to this distributed load that will be 1 times 4 and the line of action will be 2 meters away, right. So, 1 times 4 into 2 equals R D times 4. So, you have found R D. So, now immediately, immediately now there are only 2 more unknowns left, right. And now we can take uh, equations of equilibrium for the entire beam. We use the hinge to get an equation of equilibrium for one part of the beam, right. So, you take moments about A for the entire system. So, in this direction 4 times 2 will be 1 moment, this in that same direction 1 times 4 that is that entire load. Now, the line of action is here, from there you have to measure the distance all the way up to there, that is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 by 2, that is this 8 here, right. In the opposite, so, so all those moments are in the um, clockwise direction. Now, in the anti-clockwise direction you will have R B times 4 also R D times 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 10, right. Now, this is for the entire beam A D. Now, R D we have already found. So, the only unknown here is R B and therefore, we can find R B. Now, you take vertical equilibrium and you say that R A plus R B plus R D is equal to 4 plus 1 times 4, right. That is this one and, uh, and we can find R A, right. So, that is the first thing that you have to do in this problem, right. So, this is new in the sense that there are three supports, but it becomes a statically determinate problem because, uh, because uh, we have a hinge, right. So, now uh, I will uh, give you look at parts of this, right. Now, this is a bit tedious as a problem in the sense that there are different features in the beam and we have to look at say different regions of the beam separately, right. Uh, otherwise, it becomes complicated, right. So, you look in this region x is in between 0 and 2, this region x is in between in the re between 2 and 4, this one x is between 4 and 6 and this one x is between 6 and 10, right. So, <coughs> uh, so we use our usual things, we go here and then we look at this side, all the positive contributions to shear force, this is a left up force, therefore, S equals R A equals 1 and the moment will be uh, M equals R A minus R A times x because that R A will cause the beam to do that, right. So, then at x equals 0 this is m, at x equals 2 that is m, shear force is constant at 1 right throughout, right. So, here once you go into this region, you go here and you look at everything that contributes to positive shear force, left up will contribute to positive shear force. So, that is R A. Okay, yeah. Uh, le let me go to this region. I, I will skip this one. I will go to this one because you know this is very similar, right? Very similar. I, I will not do everything, right? So I have gone here already. I have gone here, right? So everything that po contributes to positive shear force, this will be R A minus four plus R B, right? Because I go here, look at this side, and anything that is um, uh, directed upwards will be contributing to positive shear because it is uh, left up, right. So, that I will get plus R A plus R B minus 4, 
here plus R A plus R B minus 4. Then the bending moment you take each one in turn. This one will contribute to negative bending moment because that is so that will be uh, uh, <coughs> that will be uh, 1 into uh, into x right. Now, here you have to be careful here. So, that is the other tricky thing about this right. So, the way you write the moment due to this one right and this one. So, we are here we have gone here moment due to this one is positive because due to 4 kilogram. Now, we forget about these two right we forget about these two. So, moment due to this one is positive because due to that you know this will beam will be bending like that. Now, what is the distance of this force to that point? It is in fact x minus 2 right. Because we, we can't, we, so, this distance is not x because x is measured from here this distance is x minus this 2 here. So, plus 4 into x minus 2 then once again R b will contribute to a negative moment because that will cause the beam to do that. So, minus R b into x minus 4 now right. So, you have x minus 2 term and x minus 4 term right and we can find the various uh, the various uh, contributions there. Now, once we go on to this side right ok right once you go here then of course, uh, we completely forget about this side instead of looking at the left hand side we look at the right hand side ok. Once we go here we can see now I am now talking only about the values of m yeah, I know s is also there right. So, <coughs> so what is the contribution to positive shear from this side now on the right hand side it is downward forces that will contribute to positive shear. So, this distance here this will be 10 minus x because one x, x you continue to measure from there right although you are looking at the right hand side x is measured from there right. So, the positive contribution will be 1 into 10 minus x 1 into 10 minus x. Uh, and of course, this one will contribute negatively because that is a right up force only right down forces contribute to positive shear. So, that will be minus R d right so, minus R d there we are minus R d plus 1 into 10 minus x. Now, where the moment is concerned this R d will contribute to negative moment because it is causing the beam to bend upwards like this. So, that is minus R d times 10 minus x right and here due to this forgetting about R d we are here now due to this U d L it will bend like that and the, the moment is 1 into 10 minus x that is a force distance from this line of action is another 10 minus x divided by 2. So, 1 into 10 minus x divided by 2. So, at, at the ends of these regions so here the end of that region is x equals 6 is one end x equals 10 is the other end. Now, you will notice that this comes out at x equals 6 m will be equal to 0. If you do not get m equals 0 you have made a mistake because the problem says there is a hinge there problem says there is a hinge there right. You will see that at uh, I have not written it here that at x equals 6 right s will not be equal to 0 right s will be 2 ok. Can you pay attention right s will be 2 and if you look at it from the other side s will be well uh, ok is that also 2 right ok. Let us see what the shear force diagram is right ok. So, shear force diagram is like this. So, sometimes a bit difficult to guess right. So, there is a value of shear force there, but no bending moment because there is a hinge there. So, if you get all those values right and you plot out the shear force and the bending moment diagrams this is the kind of thing that you will get. So, this is a serious problem right this is a serious problem ok. So, it had the difficulty of having three supports and we had to use an internal hinge in order to find the extra reaction and also we have four regions and you have to make sure you do not make mistakes that that, that thing about writing uh, x minus 2 
or x minus 4 when the force is somewhere in between the beam in the inside of the beam you have to remember that right okay okay oops right now you can also find the uh, position of maximum bending moment right so, in order to do that, to find the maximum moment, we can put dm by dx equals 0 or shear force equals 0 in that region, right. So, at x equals 8, you will find the position of maximum moment. You substitute 8 inside this expression at x equals 8, you will find that the bending moment is equal to minus 2 and that will be your point of maximum bending moment where this distributed load is operating, right. Okay, so, you have this kind of bending moment and shear force distributions in that B, right. Okay. So, now we go to uh, what we call this principle of superposition, right. So, actually, you know, this is the way that this, now if you remember the sort of syllabus that I gave at the start, right. Now, I have mentioned it specifically, but the principle of superposition is not, uh, I mean it is a very useful thing, but it there is, it's, there, it's not really rocket science, right. It means that uh, you can add one, the results of one system, you can add to the results of another system, right. Of course, there are a few approaches that you use, which you maybe just need to be a bit aware of, right. So, so this principle of superposition, right. Now, if you look at uh, this, this single system here, right, I mean you, you can, you can solve this system without using the principle of superposition, you should be able to do that, you know after everything that I taught you, right, but I am using a simple system to teach you this principle, right, because you will, can say that this is made up of system 1 and system 2. So, in system 1 and system 2, you have one load each. The reactions of course, you have in both systems, but only part of the total reaction is there in system 1 and the other part is there in system 2, right. So, what you will have is that this R A will be equal to R A 1 plus R A 2 and R B will be equal to R B 1 and R B 2, right. And similarly, the shear force and bending moment diagrams, the composite one for this will be obtained from this and this, right. So, that is the principle of superposition, right. So, actually speaking, this principle will hold for what are called linear elastic, right, linear elastic, right. So, we are not even going to touch this area of plasticity, right, but I do not know whether you go to the materials lab and do an experiment where you have some kind of stress strain curve for a small piece of metal where the stress strain curve will look something like this, right and, and maybe it does something like that. Have any of you all done this? Can you raise your hands? Can you do this experiment? Right, okay. So, this is the linear elastic part, right. So, virtually all the structures including the ones that you are standing on or sitting on or whatever it is, they are in this linear elastic region which means that if you load it, it will take the same path upon unloading. Now, if you go here, if you try to unload it, it will come on a different path, right. So, this principle of superposition holds for linear elastic structures, right, okay. So, uh, others will do the experiment, those of you who have not done it, right. Um, now, there are ways in which you can combine these bending moment diagrams and this is more to illustrate that you can do it graphically almost, right. So, so, so let us look at this. Now, this is the shear force diagram, right, this is the shear force diagram. So, we know that when you have a loading system like this, right, I mean you can do all the calculations for yourself or whatever it is, but we know that 
you know on the left hand side normally you will get a positive shear force distribution and on the right hand side you will have a negative shear force distribution. If it is a concentrated load we know that the shear is uniform right. So much you know from just two lectures you know that right. So, here also you will get it, but the only thing is this positive part will remain longer because this concentrated load is further away. So, you have plus there and minus there right. Now, when you add it, when you add it, you, you can add it algebraically right. So, you can add it like this ok. So, this is this plus value you add to that plus value, this plus value you add to whatever plus value is there at this distance and then you will get that you know uh, this uh, the, this reaction will uh, come there and uh, and this reaction this one may be positive it may be negative right I do not know whether I have put anywhere here. So, in this one if you want you can write that W 2 is greater than W 1 right ok. W 2 is greater than W 1 that is why you get this part as positive right. Is that correct? I am not sure about that. Is that correct? Uh, Now, all you can say <laughs> better you <laughs> better be safe, we say that R A 1 is greater than R A 2 right ok, that is all I am prepared to say right ok. R A 1 is greater than R A 2 right, then you will get this bit as positive ok. Then here this one will be negative. So, so this 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 positive in fact cancels with this negative right. So, the shear force becomes less say, certainly less than what you have here and then here of course, right at the in this region you have a negative shear force and this also is contributing the negative shear force. So, it will have a larger negative shear force right. Right, I, I think this one should read plus R A right ok, that one should read plus R A plus R A ok. Ok, now graphically you actually do the, the opposite of what you do algebraically right. So, you have this baseline here of course, you, you must be a little aware of what you are doing, you have this baseline there. One of these diagrams you draw above the baseline, so that is SFD 1. The other one you draw below the baseline, in other words you invert it. So, instead of marking the positive part on top, we mark the positive part at the bottom right and the negative part is marked on the top. Right. You, you might think that no, that is not correct, but actually speaking this is a graphical solution and this the, 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 the final answer from that graphical solution is, is the shear force actually from that graphical solution is not the distance from the baseline to either of these things, but the distance from one extreme to another right. So, so from this extreme to this extreme that will be the shear force right ok, but of course, you have to have some background knowledge about what the sign is going to be right. So, this will be plus. Now, you see here, so, so you can see that in terms of the magnitude in this region the, the magnitude is additive right. You have one large shear force another la, I mean you, you have one shear force another shear force they add right and actually you get so this one should be plus R A right. Now, here you, you have that you know here this is drawn at the bottom of the line, now this is also drawn at the bottom of the line. So, if you go from one boundary to another, one boundary to another then that region is very small right. So, although I have drawn it a bit larger there, 
this is the shear force. The shear force is the difference between the two that is for a graphical solution, right. So, here once again the, the difference is you know from one boundary to another. So, this is of course negative, but once again the magnitude of the shear is large, right. So, the magnitude of the shear in this kind of system tends to be small in between two concentrated loads, right. So, this is your resultant shear force diagram. So, you invert it, right. Now, before I ask you whether you are confused, it is a bit confusing for the shear force diagram. Bending moment diagram is in a sense easier to understand. Now, so you should be able to now close your eyes and draw the bending moment diagram for this. So, this will be a linear like that, this will be linear like that, right. So, both are actually under the baseline, they are both negative, right. But when we are superposing graphically, we draw one below and the other one we draw above like that, right. So, in other words, the magnitude of the bending moment is additive, right. Uh, it is in fact negative, but you know the, the bending moment effect is added together. So, the actual value of the bending moment is 0 here, 0 here and the distance between the two extremes. So, you can see gradually this distance is increasing, right. Up to this point, then of course, there is a change. We are not sure whether it is increasing or decreasing, but there is some kind of change and then you know this is the, this is the value of the bending moment. Then when you come here, certainly the value of the bending moment is reducing and it will become 0 here. So, this is the resultant bending moment diagram, right. So, it will be all negative, but this is the way that you superpose it, right, graphically. But you, you can say that, okay, I, I want to not get confused doing graphical methods. I, I am personally not very fond of graphical methods myself. I prefer to do an algebraic method because then the signs and all are very clear. All I am saying is that there are two approaches, right. So, what I would do is, I would take the value of the bending moment at the key points, right. So, this is 0 plus 0, that is 0. That is minus some value here and I get some other minus value there, I add that and you get it here. Then this is minus some value here and this is minus some value there, you add it and you get it here. This is 0 plus 0, so you get it there, right. So, actually you need 4 points to construct this bending moment diagram, right, because there is a, a change point here, so to speak and a change point so to speak there, but the rest is linear, right. So, you have two linear systems, right, where the break is different in each of those systems. So, you take four algebraic values and you can draw the bending moment diagram, right. Similarly, the shear force diagram you can do like that, right. You can take this point, say this point by adding that plus that, this point by adding that plus that, then this point also you add this plus the same thing there and you will get a jump, right. Then this point by adding that plus that, then another point in the same place by adding this plus this same thing and then you add that plus that and you should be able to get uh, a composite shear force diagram, right. Okay. So, that is a simple story for superposition. Uh, let me just see whether anyone wants to ask me a question. So, I will say algebraically it is the same, but these graphical methods, they have a long history, right, okay, they have a long history. And in some cases, sometimes it might help us to visualize things, right, might help us to visualize things. Just the fact that, you know, in that bending moment diagram, for example, when you draw one on top of the other, you see that, you know, it becomes a much larger figure, much larger figure. So, so it becomes quite clear because one you invert, the other you uh, keep the same, right. But I, I must confess that when you do that, you must be very aware of what the signs are, right, the signs. You must keep track of the signs, okay. Right. Right, I have a few other things to do also, so let me, uh, let me go on. I'm not sure. So, you all are the guinea pigs actually because you are the first lecture that I am doing. So, the timing of my lecture also I learned from teaching you all, right. The other groups are slight advantage because of that. So, the, this, this system I do not know whether you have seen, okay, 
this individual system we have seen this one and this one I have done with this already and this one also we have seen separately right. So, here I am only doing a graphical solution for that right. So, here now this is the shear force diagram for one of them right shear force diagram for one of them. Uh, now, in this case m b is greater than m a right. So, if m b is greater than m a you will get a negative shear here right. You better go and check that out for yourself. In the earlier example we did m a was greater than m b. So, you got a positive shear positive uniform shear here we are reversing that. So, you will get a negative uniform shear here the shear will be triangular distributed 0 here positive here negative there right. So, this is this this one you will understand and this one also this this expression we have found now this is negative shear right. So, now graphically if you add this you will now turn this upside down and put it there right. So, now this entire thing now will be negative right. So, so here can you see this entire thing is negative right. So, it will be negative in fact up to that point right. So, the 0 will be somewhere here right. So, the 0 will be somewhere there. Then from there onwards only you will get a positive part right. So, the actual shear force distribution will look something like this. You will have a fairly small positive part and a much larger negative part right. So, sometimes it is easier to see when you do this inversion and do this graphical solution. This is the point where the negative shear changes to the positive shear. So, if you look at the bending moment diagram uniformly distributed load this is the standard bending moment diagram for concentrated loads at both ends the, the one that we did earlier had a had the opposite slope, but now because m b is greater than m a you have only positive shear like that sorry positive moment like that. So, if we invert it now so what we are trying to say is this negative we cancel a lot of this positive right. So, we invert this one to see what will happen. So, if we invert that one, so it will be drawn like this you still mark this positive. So, when you mark this positive and this negative now this bit there are the positive is greater than the negative. So, this will be a positive bending moment right, but now the negative bending moment will take over and the negative bending moment will remain like this. And here of course, the positive will be greater than the negative and so, so you can see where the positive is greater than the negative right. So, in these cases sometimes it is helpful. So, the resultant bending moment diagram will be something like this. This bit has a small positive bending moment area on this end also you will have a, fairly, uh, a slightly larger bending moment area because m b is greater than m a in this region you will have a negative bending moment area right. So, the, the points c and d are obtained from where these two lines intersect like that. So, that is that is the usefulness of this graphical approach right you can see where it intersects of course, you can calculate it also you can calculate it right. So, it will be interesting for you to calculate it I mean in order for you to calculate it you will have to write m as a function of x for this one and m as a function for the uh, uh, as a function of x for this one and see where this m is equal to that m right the absolute value of this m where it is equal to that m and that will give you the value of x at which the bending moment changes from positive to negative right ok. ok. Right now, I have given you uh, a tutorial. Right, have a look at that tutorial. Let me put that tutorial up. So, what I will do is either on Moodle or when I come to class next time I will give you the solutions for these right. I think I should give at least for this tutorial I should give you the solutions right. So, I will do that. 
So, here you find two loads instead of one. So, it is just an extension of what you know. So, you would have to consider in these two different regions, right. So, from here to here and from there to there, right, okay. And if you want for here, you can even measure x from here. Sometimes it may be easier to measure x from there, right. You can decide where to measure x from. There is no magic saying that you have to measure x from there, right. But you have to know where to measure x from, right, and you have to know what you are doing, right. Similarly, here also it might make sense to measure x from there, right, okay, but uh, it depends, right. So, here the uniformly distributed load stops midway, right. So, this is a fairly, s no, no, this is also, no. So, this is similar example, right, where you, you find in a simply supported beam, this is loaded for only part its length, uh, part of its length, right. Okay, right, this is not a PowerPoint. Hmm. Right. Right, uh, I, I think, uh, okay, so, so this is something like that superposition problem that I gave you, right, but in fact, I have done a more difficult problem with a third support as well as a hinge. So, this should not pose any great difficulty for you, right, okay right. So, that is that one. So, you are supposed to draw for all of these the entire bending moment and shear force diagrams, right. Draw bending moment and shear force diagrams for all of these, right. This one I have actually solved, right. So, some of these are part of your notes as well. This one I have actually solved also in your notes, right. Find the position and magnitude of the maximum bending moment for the beam below, right. Now, in this one, one of the problems is that we do not know where the maximum bending moment is, right. So, you have to inspect different locations. So, basically, you have to draw the bending moment diagram, right. So, the bending moment diagram, so, so one of the things is that you should uh, have an idea about how to draw a bending moment diagram without the values, right, without the values, right. So, you should develop that skill. By the time you finish this two tutorial, you may be able to do it, right. So, I will do it for you here, right, because we have all these ideas that where you have concentrated loads, you have constant shear and linear bending moment distributions, where you have uniformly distributed load, you have linear shear right and uh, I will draw it a bit further up because normally people at the back complain rightfully yeah. I am not going to put all these values and all, but here now you have a UDL then the UDL just stops and there is a concentrated load there and this is where you have your support. So, if you looked at the first time I mentioned about these beams, beams, this would probably be called an overhanging beam, right. If you look at your notes, it will be called an overhanging beam and there is a, a load here, right, okay. So, let me try to draw the shear force diagram, right. So, now, if you go here and look at this side, this is a right down force. So, the shear force will be like that. There will be a fairly significant reaction here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I am not sure about this. Okay, let me start from this side. So, there will be a positive shear there, right. So, the shear force will be 0 somewhere here, I am not sure whether it is going to be within this region or outside this region, right. But let me guess that it is going to be here and then it will go down to that point wherever until you, 
So, we do not know whether it is going to be exactly whether it is going to be here to the right hand side or to the left hand side, but my guess is going to be somewhere here. Then beyond this there is no load, so it will be uniform like that. Then it will drop vertically downwards like that because there is a vertical load. Then it will go here and uh, and I think it will do this right. I may have solved this. Okay, right, this is the problem. Right, okay, so, so, so this much we know the shear force will become 0 here. It will be negative, right? Okay, right. So, I, I think the shear force diagram will look something like this, right? So, what I will do is I will give you a little time, right, to solve these problems. Uh, and I will then put this thing up on uh, on Moodle, right? So some of the solutions you will have here also, right? Okay. So your bending moment diagram will look like this. So here there is a hogging moment like that. Then because of that point load, once again bending moment diagram will be linear up to that point, right. Then up to this point, then here of course, so the shear force is 0 there, so your maximum bending moment will be there. do something like this and do something like this, right? So, this part of the bending moment line will be straight, that part of the bending moment line will be straight, right? But this part will be curved, right? So, your maximum bending moment may be there, it may be under that load or it may be in this concentrated zone region, right. So, to find out where it is, is not such an easy problem, right. But you should have some idea about this shape that it is going to take. You cannot get any solutions from this, but if you go systematically for each of these regions. Uh, writing expressions for S of x that is shear force at x and bending moment at x for each of these regions, then you should be able to get all the equations that are required, right. So, I have done it here, right. So, I do not have the time to do it in class. I will put this up on Moodle, right. I will put this up on Moodle, right. Now, the last problem in that oh this one here question number 4 right question number 4 is part is similar to the assignment that I am giving you right. So, I will tell you about that in the last 15 minutes right. Question number 5 is this question of symmetry and skew symmetry right. So, I think I should spend some time there. 
draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the beam shown by dividing the load distribution into a symmetric and skew symmetric part. Okay. Now, here this is a uniformly distributed load over half its length, right. So, now if you have a beam like this, Right, that is symmetrically supported, symmetrically loaded, right? Okay. But we do not have a beam like that, right? We have only one that is loaded over half its length, right? So, that is w per unit length, right, w per unit length, you can write per unit length, right. Now, I think there is a similar problem given either, I do not know, maybe with numbers. So, you can solve this problem, right, this is, there is no difficulty in solving this problem, right. Like everything that I said about superposition and all, you do not need to know that, right, but uh, to solve the problem. But you need to know it in terms of uh, being knowledgeable in structural mechanics, right? So, you need to be aware of these things, right? Now, this can be represented as a superposition of a symmetric and skew symmetric system, right? Symmetric means I have to convert this to what I had before, right? Something that looked like what I had before, right? So, what I do is, now you might ask me how do I guess this, right, okay, that is the thing, guessing is not easy, right, it comes with some experience, right, and uh, it is because of guessing that any, any field advances in knowledge, right, without guessing you cannot advance in knowledge, right, every new thing in mathematics, every new thing in engineering starts with a guess, right, so instead of putting W. I will put W by 2. Now, why do I do that? Because I have guessed it, right? Or maybe I have read it somewhere. Now, W by 2 is not the same system as before, but I can add something to convert this to the previous system. Now, what do I do? I can I have to increase this to w on one side, reduce it to 0 on the other side, right. So, I can put another w by 2 here. Right. And I do not know, I think this is a nicer way to represent it. I can load it upwards by w by 2 here. Or you can put another kind of symbol and you can put minus w by 2, same thing, right. But this is nicer if you look at it like this. So, so if you want I can again put minus w by 2. This, this one it is acting downwards, that one it is acting upwards, right. Right. So, now you can solve this, right, you can solve this. But I will tell you what you can expect, right. So, this one of course is very easy, we know how to do that. So, this is the this is the loading system. So, we need to find what are the shear force diagrams, what is the bending moment diagram, right. All of these lectures are designed to do that. So, here shear force diagram looks like this. I am just going to draw the shapes, right, not the values like that. And bending moment diagram looks like that. Right. Now, uh, <laughs> we, can, we can try to guess what this is going to be like, right. You should not guess, I mean you can do the calculations, this is where the guessing is actually involved, but I will tell you 
that the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram are going to look like this, right? So, the shear force diagram, right, will look like this. It will do this. Mm. I have to make sure it doesn't make a mistake. Yeah, it will do that. It will come here and it will do that. Yeah, that is the way the shear force diagram will look like for that skew symmetric system, right. Bending moment diagram will look like this. You have to find this out for yourself. No, it won't do that. No, no, I, I, no, it won't be like this, right? I, I'm, I'm wrong here, right? Okay, sorry. It will not look like that. It will look like this, right? My apologies, it will look like that, right? Bending moment diagram will look like this. Now, I will tell you how I discovered my mistake, right? <laughs> because I have some idea about this bending moment diagram. I know the bending moment diagram is like this. I know there has to be a maximum here. If there is going to be a maximum here, there has to be a 0 there, right. So, that is how I corrected myself, right. I know that this shear force diagram is symmetric for a skew symmetric loading, right. So, I just want you to see the pattern here. This is a symmetric loading arrangement. This is a skew symmetric shear force diagram. And this is a symmetric bending moment diagram. This is a skew symmetric loading arrangement. This is a symmetric shear force diagram. And this is a skew symmetric bending moment diagram, right. So, there is similarity in terms of the symmetry function or the symmetry property between the loading and the bending moment. Shear is the opposite, right? Shear is the opposite. So, a skew symmetric loading arrangement will give you a symmetric shear force diagram, right? So, this is the way it will operate, right? So, you, you can actually do the calculations now and find this out, right? So, I mean there is a lot of work that you have to do for yourself, right, okay. So, so we do not operate this like tuition classes, right. I do not know, maybe there are tuition classes in Nuwe Guda that do this, but I do not do it, right, I do not do it, right. And you might go to the class and find out what to do, but better you do it yourself, right, better you do it yourself, right, and because that is the way you learn a subject, right, okay, that is the way you learn a subject, okay. So, when you want to get the ultimate shear force diagram, you, you can add this and add that. So, here you get a fairly large shear force and here you get a small, fairly small shear force, right, right. Because if you add this, you will get, let us say we are just adding algebraically. So, you have a large shear force, right. A and here this one is positive, this one is negative. So, so it might be almost 0 even, I am not sure. No, maybe it cannot be 0. Right, you get some value, right? So, so if you look at this also, that makes sense because most of the loading is on this side, and we know that we know that this reaction is going to be larger than that. So, the shear force is going to be larger on this side than on this side numerically, 
and this will be plus, this will be minus, right. Where bending moment is concerned, this negative bending moment will be additive in that region, this bending moment will be additive and here this negative bending moment will be reduced by this, right. So, you get a fairly large bending moment here, but reduced here, but everything will be negative, right. Everything will be negative. Here, this will be positive, of course, here, but that will just serve to reduce this negative part. It will just serve to reduce that negative part, right. So, if you want to actually now use this graphical superposition to solve this problem, I will just show it to you for the bending moment diagram. What you need to do is to turn this upside down and put it here, right. So, you do this like this. right, turn it upside down and put it there, right. So, that is, so in this kind of situation, it is easy to visualize. Then this is your actual bending moment diagram. So, large bending moments there, no zeros, it's either large and then it becomes small, zeros only at the ends. Shear force of course, you will find one place where it is in fact uh, 0, here there are two places where it is 0. Here there is one place that is 0, in this one you will find one place only that is 0, right, ok. So, something to think about, ok. see what I am drawing? Okay. So, that finishes the tutorial, right. Sorry, sorry. So, the last thing that I will do is to introduce this uh, <coughs> assignment. The assignment that I have put here now once again, <laughs> once again uh, I uh, I, I forgot to put uh, the latest version of the assignment, but this is an earlier version of the assignment. There are some additions, right, in the new version, right. So, you have a look at your sheet, right. This picture is the same, right. So, here this is once again what is called an overhanging beam, right. Now, you will find places where there is likely to be a maximum moment. So, what are the places that there is going to be a maximum moment? So, this part 1 as I have clearly indicated in what I have given you is to be done individually, right. So, do your own work, right. Actually, I do not mind if you ask a friend how to do it, but when you are doing it, do not copy it, right. You can, I mean, you know, you can get knowledge from anybody, but when you write it out to submit it to me, I mean, you can cheat if you want, but uh, use this as an exercise to learn something, right when you are actually writing it, do it by yourself, do it by yourself. You know, you know in the US, you know there is a colleague of mine in the department, uh, Dr. Chintaka Malikarachi, if you do civil engineering, you might meet him, right. So, he, he, he spent some time at Caltech, one of the top universities in the world, right. So, there are graduate students there, right. So, he says some of these the graduate students, so everybody, well, in the US is saying, they get examinations, right then they can go and do at home, right. <laughs> so, we, we do not do that. I mean, we have, you have to come to the exam hall to do the exam. So, he says there are some students, not only US students, even students from Taiwan and places like that, they take this assignment home and they actually fail that exam. So, obviously, it means, I mean, there are people who pass the exam and there are some people who fail, 
So, obviously those people are doing the exam by themselves at home and they are not copying in order to pass. Of course, in those systems you can take an exam once, if you fail you can take it again, right. Here also there are repeat exams, but what I am saying is you know that is the attitude to knowledge, right. So, you have a take home exam <laughs> where top students from all over the world actually fail the exams, amazing, amazing. But do not think that you cannot do it, we can create that culture here also, it is up to you, right. So, uh, so, so where would you expect the maximum hogging, where would you expect the maximum sagging, right. Obtain expressions for the maximum hogging and maximum sagging, right. I am not going to tell you anything more, you have to do this, right, in terms of A and W. Find the value of A, that is, you know, this, 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 this support is variable, right. So, you find, you know, for different values of A, you will find ma different maximum hogging and different maximum sagging. So, analytically, find the maximum value of A for which the maximum bending moment anywhere in the beam is a minimum, right. So, you think about that, you have to think about that, right. So, I do not mind you are discussing that and whatever, right. Uh, but, uh, but when you are doing it, do it by yourself. Then I have given two additional parts also, that is new, right, that is new, okay, E and F, right, with two other figures also. But most of the time we are concentrating on this figure, most of the time we are concentrating on that figure, okay. Right now, this is a way that you can do it in a, in a, in a different way, right. So, we, we do it analytically, now we are doing it sort of, uh, you know, case by case, right. So, you actually take different values of A, so 0 meters, 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter. In case there are 6 people in your group rather than 5 in your practical group, uh, then you can take uh, A equals 5 volts, right. So, uh, you have to do this in your practical group, right. The first part you have to do individually, it does not matter whether you are part of the practical group or not. But in order to fill this table, you take all your individual work and then you put this group work also together staple it and you submit it, right. You have to submit it, I have told you when to submit it, it is different from what is written here because this is <laughs> 2 or 3 years ago, 4 years ago, right. And it is you are given on a Monday, lunch time on a Monday, right, okay. I, I think it is March 5th or something like that, right. And I have given you an extra column also, right, and a few additional questions, right. So, each person gets one value of A. And you have to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for that value of A. And then from this graph, say, so you know, plot the variation of absolute values of MB and M sag, right. MB is a fixed point, of course, B will change, right. But you know, for a given value of A, we know where B is. Where the maximum sagging moment is, of course, we do not know. You have to find that, right, okay. So, you have to then tabulate, tabulate uh, uh, for each value, what is the hogging moment at B, what is the sagging moment in the interior of the beam and you have to say at which position you get this, what is the x value for which you get this, right, for different values of A. So, I will leave you to think about that assignment, you have to submit it on that date, right, okay. Any questions about the assignment? Any questions? Now, this is an odd, I will put this also in your, as a forum, right. So, some things in the forum are completely useless for your exam, right. Some things are useless, right. But the things in the forum are for me to discover who the keen students are, right. Okay, that may be of some value to you, right. Okay, now there is an Indian mathematician called Ramanujan, right. How many of you have heard of Ramanujan? 
How many have heard Ramanujan? One person. Okay. There is a film also which unfortunately I haven't watched. It's called uh, Masters of Infinity, I think. Right? It came out last year or the year before. Now Ramanujan said that if you take a set of numbers and add it to infinity, right? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, then the answer you will get is not infinity but minus 1 upon 12. Right? How many of you have heard about this? Right, okay, a few people, a few people, right? Okay, not bad, not bad, okay? So, um, it's important that you are curious about things like this, right? It will make you better engineers. So, in order to prove this, he takes two series and a couple of series. The first series is like this, 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. Now, if you look at the sum of this series, right, or the value of this, here the value is 1, here the value is 0, here the value is 1, 0, 1, 0. So, Ramanujan says a reasonable value for that series is half in between 0 and 1, okay. So, that is a big assumption, admittedly. Then he takes another series. Now, this is a bit different from this because every other term there is minus 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 like that. Then he adds two of those series but he adds it in a slightly different way because this is going to infinity he displaces this by one character right. So, you have 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 here is the same thing 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 like that, but displaced by 1. It does not matter because he is going all the way to infinity, right. Now, he adds this. Now, what does he get? 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. He gets S1, right. So, the value of S1 he knows is half, right. So, he twice of S2 therefore is half and then S2 equals quarter, right. Now, he takes this S which we are supposed to find and does minus S2 and then that is this one now minus that one, right, minus, mi uh, mi minus of that one, right. So, uh, uh, when he does that, then he gets a new series which goes 0 plus 4, 0, plus 8, 0, plus 12, 0, plus 16. That in fact is 4 times the series that he wanted, right? Because this is 4 times 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, things like that, right? Okay? So, that is 4 is. So, on this left hand side you have S minus S2 which is quarter equals 4 S, right? Then you take this S onto that side, you get 3 S. 3s equals minus quarter and s equals minus 1 to s, right. Now, just in case you think that this is some kind of mathematical trickery, there is this book on string theory, right, a, a published textbook on string theory which is one of the most uh, recent advances, recent means now it is about maybe 15, 20 years old in, in, in uh, subatomic physics right, which uses this result, right, sigma of n 1 is to infinity equals minus 1 upon 12. I will put this on Moodle for you to have another look at, okay, right, okay, thank you, I will see you next week.